These graduates are embarking on a career that could have fatal consequences. To date, 49 officers in the United States have died since the beginning of this year. And California is the state with the most officer deaths. I want to get the facts on how the next generation trains to face this reality. The dangers on the streets of America, uh, rural or in municipalities, is very great. Yes, sir. Glen County Sheriff Larry Jones knows firsthand the risks of being in the line of duty. Mr. Lee! Young man and woman's game out there. Uh, the older officers that uh, have survived a, a 25 to 40 year career, uh, they need to pass on those uh, uh, lessons learned. It's rule number one. It is With more than 40 years of experience in the field, Jones can also add range master to his resume. Where's Lieutenant McGee? Making sure the recruits are both mentally and physically prepared for their futures in law enforcement. Typically, only about half of the recruits graduate from this rigorous six-month program. I think they are the cream of the crop that have uh, decided to dedicate their lives to public service. Three mags, 12 each. I caught up with Officer Garrett Maxwell, who completed the program in 2008, to find out how the Butte College Law Enforcement Academy shaped his career. Sets a foundation for what we do as police officers. Um, I firmly believe that your learning never stops in this profession. My personal uh, Opinion is that the day I stop learning is the day I'm going to retire. Maxwell started off with the Anderson Police Department and transferred to the Reading Department last year. I'll never forget the first time I sat in a police car and was actually driving it, grabbing a radio and going, what did I get myself into? The training program set the tone for Maxwell's profession. And since first suiting up, he continues to learn something new every day. It's the first training program you run when you start at an actual agency itself, you kind of have a... Uh, a reality check on what you're doing because you're actually doing it for real. A reality these recruits will soon face. Recruits train in these firearm courses, which are set up with different obstacles like this, and it can prepare them for real life or death situations. We got to go up there and assess what's a threat and what's not a threat and shoot the right target, and it really puts us in a good it's mindset a to breathe, take your time, make well placed shots, and, and just get the job done. Next shooter, please. The firearms portion is one of the more stressful but valuable tests for these recruits. They're learning how to handle their weapons on the range because they could be outgunned while on patrol. A handgun is a defensive weapon at best, and we must prepare these individuals to come up against uh, heavier firepower that law enforcement faces. Makes you feel protected and confident, uh, but put in a situation where you have to use it, it's it's not a situation that you take lightly, so you have to assess each situation separately and, and be able to use that lethal force appropriately. These men and women must rely on what they were taught because anything could happen day one on the job. And after the program, it takes advanced training to maintain these skills, putting their own lives on the line to protect and serve, risking their lives for others because that's the job of law enforcement. I think each and every one of us do it because we feel we have the ability to make a difference in our community. This program costs each recruit more than $5,000. And after graduation, they pursue careers as police officers, sheriff's deputies, and U.S. Marshal agents.